Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our new chat. I'm here with uh, Tracy Miller. Hi, Tracy. How are you? Good morning. I'm so good. Thank you for asking me to come visit with you today. It's uh, Saturday morning here in New York, and uh, uh, you are Edmonton, Alberta. So Alberta. it's in the prairies of Canada, out west ish, not all the way west, but we're definitely Western province. So we're a couple hours behind you in time. So I'm oh, going to have my like morning coffee with you guys while we chat about yeah. knitting. I still have my coffee. This is, I think, is my uh, coffee. And uh, uh, so we will start chatting. We are going to have lots of fun. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we have uh, uh, Amy here helping us uh, minding the, the actual chat. So if you want to say anything uh, or if you want to come on and let us know what you're working on, if you have any question, we can also spotlight you. And uh, this is more about you. You know, I'm going to ask questions, we're going to chat, but we really want you to be involved if you don't mind being recorded, of course. And, uh, uh, and the episode will end up on our YouTube uh, channel so you can watch it again. Uh, and uh, so let's get started. Yes, that's so great. I would love to see what everybody's knitting at some point too. Yeah, I can see thing. quite a few people knitting. I'm actually yeah. going, I will, you will see me moving back and forth because I'm trying to look at in so many different uh, uh, places uh, and see who, what everybody is uh, knitting as well. Good. So, uh, so the idea of this uh, uh, chat uh, came about because uh, I just fell in love uh, with uh, one of uh, Tracy's design, the wild uh, uh, rose cowl. And uh, when I saw it, I actually, I think you posted a little sneak peek a while back. <laughs> you had not uh, published the pattern yet. Yeah. And I remember putting a note. I just uh, saved it on Instagram and I said, whatever that is, I'm going to make it. Aww, I can't and believe that. <laughs> just so nice. And uh, um, and I thought like, you know, ooh, will I be able to make it? Is it going to be like a big pattern? Plus it's color work. I'm like a newbie in color work. Will I be able to do it? And uh, so when you published it, I immediately got a pattern. Aww. And the, the original yarn was uh, uh, Moondrake, uh, the Moondrake yeah. yarn, which is really lovely. And uh, um, and I thought, oh, okay, let me see, you know. And I just put it on the side, of course. Uh, but uh, uh, then I thought, this summer I'm going to have time. Uh, let me try to do it. And of course, Amy, who, as I said, is here helping us, said, "Well, you have to swatch first. Oh, oh, oh this <laughs> is red. It's watching. <laughs> swatch, and she said. You have to swatch in the round. And I'm like, oh, swatch in the round. What is that? How do I do it? You know, but I yeah. thought, sure, if I can do everything, you know, I have the yarn. Of course, I have tons of yarn. <laughs> Amazing yarn. So I did. And uh, I was so happy with the swatch. First was so fun to swatch in the round. So this is my little swatch. I just want you to see how the flower was. And uh and when I had that, I had it for quite a bit. I actually took me a few months, you know, like a couple of months to decide to actually, I said, okay, I've done the swatch. And then I thought, oh, maybe I could just a swatch in every color. And that's it. I don't have to do the actual cow. Right. You could knit two cowls basically by doing that. <laughs> but swatching in the round, it was so much fun. It was so much easier than I thought it was going to be. And, yeah. uh, you know, and, and, and it's fun because this could be like a coaster. It absolutely can. And it really does give you like your true gauge in the round because we can yeah. be a little bit off when we purl back and forth, right? I yeah. love it. I love swatching in the round and it makes the cutest swatches. Yeah. And I was like, okay, let's do that. And, yeah. uh, and then I reach out to you and you said, yes, let's do it. And I'm like, oh God, Tracy, you know, I, I, I love you. I love you. And I love, of course, I love you and your sister. Um, so I thought it's a good opportunity to uh, come on and uh, and chat a little bit. We know whether you're doing the knit along with us, uh, you're knitting the cow, whatever. No, I am. I love. First of all, I love your color choices. Makes me want to like redo my whole thing in exactly your colors. Um, but it's very, very like I don't even know what the right word is. I was very honored that you liked the design, and then when you wanted to do a knit along, in my head just kind of like blew off a little bit. That's amazing. So we love, Jody and I both love you and your yarns. So that was, 
it's a big deal. It's very thrilling. So thank you for that. Oh, thank you. And I, uh, I see the people are chatting in the chat. Let us know where you're coming from. So we have uh, Joyce coming from Michigan. And she says she's working on a Hohi Lone Skins shawl, which is a really nice, uh, the, the, the new shawl that she uh, just released with one skin of uh, yarn. It was really lovely, uh, lovely too. So uh, I'm, please I'm gonna miss that keep, one. keep the comments coming. Are you making that one too? I am. My mom loves one skein shawl. She loves the size to wear. So I've already knit her two of Hohi's one skein shawls. So when this one came out, I was like, great, that's another new one I can make for my mom. They're that's beautiful. Great. Yeah. And yeah. plus it's Hohi. So, you know, everything. Oh, is <laughs> I love everything she does, but those yeah. are really great. And I, and I, now you can kind of whip through a one skein. There's nothing that's not amazing about a one skein project. Yeah. And it, those are so pretty. Yeah. Yeah, host. Yeah, I mean, hello, Joyce, my friend Joyce. <laughs> we know each other from Michigan. Oh, hi, Joyce. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, but let's, uh, um, before we go, you know, before we actually turn in and we talk about this particular design sure. uh, and uh, much more, I think it would be nice to uh, just talk about you a little bit because you are always. Uh, on YouTube with your sister, talking about everybody else, talking about project, talking about knitting. But, uh, uh, you know, maybe we should just talk a little bit about uh, you. Okay, that feels weird, but okay. <laughs> so, no many, I mean, everybody knows about the grocery girls, and uh, but I cannot believe that you've been YouTubing for six years. Me either. That time really does fly because We've been having so much fun. We had to look it up this year, how long it's been. Yeah, it goes by so quickly. Yeah, we love it. We still get so excited to gather our projects and new things we've discovered and get together. And we love it. This coming week is, you know, our week to get together. And I'm already excited about, about it. Oh, that's good. Now you do it every two weeks, right? Yeah, that was originally how we did it. And then throughout the pandemic, we were all home. Um, and people were, myself included, kind of struggling with being home and kind of in that stuck yeah. state, right? So we figured out Zoom <laughs> and decided to do it every week. So we did it every week for a long time. I don't even know how long. It just yeah. got, became our routine. Um, yeah. But it does get to be a bit much and it's hard to keep the knitting interesting. Yeah, unless we're just constantly casting on new things, which that happens too. But um, yeah, every two weeks is really good. It, it melds well with work schedules and those things. So yeah, every two weeks is great for us. Yeah, yeah, it's good because yeah, you can see. I'm sure. I mean, as much as you need. Uh, yeah. Or probably how long do you need? How much do you need every day? Or it every really, day? it totally depends. Summers, I have way more time for knitting. So all I did in July was cast on sweaters. I have like four half sweaters that I have to finish. But, um, you know, some weeks are a lot. And so, but every day I knit every day. So in the evening after dinner, I'll always, if we're sitting down watching, you know, watching a show or visiting, I will always be knitting in the evening. I don't always have time during the day to knit. That's that's a real luxury if I do. Right. Um, but if I'm designing a pattern or something, I consider that work. So that is day knitting. So I do do that. So I do, I especially love that. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And yeah. we will talk about your uh, uh, design, but uh, going back to the, the chat that you were doing uh, during the pandemic, yeah. uh, I think that's, uh, uh, I mean, to be honest, you're one of the reasons why I started as well with the live chats is uh, uh, because, you know, everybody, we were so like in lockdown and we were trying to do things. Uh, we had, uh, you know, as uh, uh, if you don't know about uh, uh, us and Mayak, because you're here for uh, mainly for Tracy is, uh, you know, we are such a small company, it's just four of us running everything around the world. And, uh, uh, you know, in three different continents and then trying to, um, trying to survive and, uh, and have our uh, ethically sustainable yarn traceable to the nomads and everything else. But uh, uh, when the pandemic started, a lot of the stores closed down and uh, they called us saying, you know, we cannot honor our uh, wholesale orders because we don't know how this is going. So, you know, we sort of went on a you know, panic mode for maybe, I would say 72 hours, no more than that. I'm somebody that always has like think ahead and have a plan and come up, you know, I don't sleep. 
<laughs> I wake up in the morning and say, okay, let's do something. Yeah. And uh, we were panicking and I said, you know what, let's just try to throw everything online. Let's open our online store. We only had a few things on our, our website and uh, we found somebody that, uh, you know, a good friend that could help us, you know, quite fast uh, and with the online shop. And, uh, and then we put a shop online and, and then, you know, somebody said, you have to sort of get people in. And I'm like, oh yeah, you know, let's put out a newsletter. And, yeah. and somebody kept saying, why don't you do a live chat? And I'm like, live? Go live? Show my face to somebody? I said, I'm not going to do that. And I remember I was in what used to be the showroom for my young. I was there one afternoon, you know, with my team saying, look, you know, there's no money coming in here. Yeah. And uh, I just, I had the phone, and I remember like, you know, on our Instagram account, I just clicked to go live and people start coming in and I just turn it off. And I thought, oh, no, I it's a little bit scary, right? <laughs> it was so scary. It was like, what do you mean people are there? What do I say? I was not prepared. And, uh, um, and then I thought, you know, I, I, it's difficult for me to just do it myself. So I thought, well, maybe I should chat with somebody and that's, you know, we start with, or first we started like a few episodes ourselves and uh, and Amy was editing them, make them beautiful. It took so long, uh, you know, oh, in, in not because, of her, but because it takes so long right. to edit a video. And then I thought, wait a minute, Jody and Tracy are not doing any editing and they are so natural. And they are, I mean, they are just go live and they are, you know, the, one of the beauty of your channel because you're true to yourself. The, the, you know, the way you are is the way you are on YouTube. There is no, you know, there is no fake or attitude. That's, you know, I met you. So I know that that's, that's the it. way, that, that's the secret. And I thought, you know what, take it or leave it. Exactly. <laughs> so, and, uh, and I remember, and I remember you telling me, just go for it, you know, just okay. do it. And, well, I, I watched all of those um live youtubes that you did live and recorded i'm a huge fan of everything that you guys do oh, um i i am ever since the day i got your yarn for the first time and knit and i'll share that project later um and then when i learned about what your company does and it's just so incredibly special and then meeting you and you're just so sweet so being stuck at home i loved I loved your YouTube channel. I've never seen so many samples knit up in a company's yarn. You guys could have a whole fashion show, right? You, yeah. you really commissioned so many samples made in your yarn. It was yeah. very interesting to watch. I loved it. I loved watching your lives. Lots of times I'm knitting, so I'm not always chatting in it, but I would join all the time. Oh, I love it. You. I'm so happy you made that decision. Um, and it does feel pretty good to not have to over prepare or be yeah. professional in a certain way. I mean, maybe it's probably different for you with your business, but I mean, you were just talking about the yarn that we love yeah, and knitting and patterns and things like that. And that's, that's so relatable to so yeah. many of us. Yeah. That we're I think, you know, the only difficult, I haven't been on YouTube for a bit, so I'm happy that we're doing this and you're going to put it on YouTube is that, uh, I don't know. I don't know, you know, and I think that's the problem with us women. I always think like that day, oh, I don't feel like it. My hair is not good. My, you know, my, I feel, I don't know, I feel bloated or whatever it is. I was like, you know, I'm not in that. I have a headache. I yeah. don't look good. Uh, and there is always that. I always feel a little bit of that pressure in a way I represent the company and I should be at my best. And uh, you know what? All I want really is to, you know, sit in bed with my, in my PJ and read a book. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, but at the same time, it's like, you know, I, I'll do it, I'll do it. And, and, uh, and if people appreciate it uh, by all means, and I'm, you know, I think for me, I, I'm not good at one, like, you know, pushing sales and stuff like that. I just, I want more people to know about the story and what we are about. And then if you end up getting your skein or your project, we are happy, of course, because we have to support ourselves, yeah. but that's not what uh, make us, uh, you know, do all the charts and, uh, you know, and I always try to highlight other designers and uh, you're, so good with that. you're so generous with that. Would you say then Mayak was always a passion project? 
oh, for yeah. you guys, right? Yeah. That's and I feel yeah. like everybody can feel that. Yeah, feel that. Is so, you know, like I think we, we, you know when we get together with Andrea, who is the co-founder, and if you think about it, it's like a veterinarian and a non-for-profit person coming together talking about you know crafting and knitting and we don't we didn't know anything about it i mean i still remember the first time when somebody says maybe you should have some knitting yarn with this uh, fiber and was like who knits you know you're like i know I no idea i mean of course i was knitting when i was young but then i stopped and uh, and i and then we looked at each other and we said whatever if this helps and we can make it work and we can actually support the Tibetan communities, keep the nomads afloat. Uh, you know, it's not easy. And uh, we do it. We just I do mean, it. Thank you know? goodness you guys took that leap, really. And it's true. Once you, you don't know how big the knitting and crafting community is, the yarn, everybody that loves yarn for, for whatever purpose you're using it for, um, you don't really know how far the reaches and how many of us are doing it until you get in it. I'm yeah. amazed. I was watching the U S open last night and I noticed this lady knitting away, like in this whole crowd of people, yeah. that's yeah. what, that's what popped out to me. So, I mean, it may not be something that's super mainstream in everybody's life. You may be yeah. the only person that you know that knits, but there's a lot of us out here that are, yeah. you know, doing yeah. that kind of stuff. And uh, let me see in the uh, in the chat we have somebody knitting. Sorry, is Ruth is uh, oh from Houston, Texas. Uh, oh wow! I see the chat anymore. Oh here, sorry, I was trying to swipe on my computer. <laughs> I was like, that doesn't work, does it? Uh, oh Jerry, hi Jerry from uh, Lawrence, uh, Pennsylvania. I'm finishing the Limpkin Colorwork sweater test knit for Andrea Gone. Wow, a Colorwork sweater. Andrea Gone or Nora Gone? I guess um cindy uh and then oh jerry oh, hi jerry that's a sweet comment paula had me pick up yarns on a video call during the pandemic and i've been hooked oh. literally oh i love to do that i like when people call me and i said just call me on a video i just it's easier <laughs> Isn't that, that, that is amazing really the whole zoom and facetime yeah. like you said with local yarn shops being so challenged during the pandemic I was worried. I mean, of lots of them, unfortunately, didn't make it, yeah. which is so sad. But I do feel that lots of us rallied and did things like FaceTimes and store tours. Yeah. And, I, you know, people kind of pivoted and did what they had to do. And it's it's pretty amazing to see, you know, like indie dyers and stuff. We were yeah. so worried about everybody. Are people going to still be doing, be able to support who they want to support? Because yeah. yeah. yarn is always best in person. Like when you can pick it up yeah. in a skein and ha hold it in your hands, to me, that's the best way. Yeah. So yeah, it was crazy. But how yeah. fun to get a video call with Paola to pick yarn. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so grocery girls, I mean, you actually have a grocery store. Yeah. That's a family business, right? It is. It is. And my dad has been in it. I mean, almost 60 years. It's been, wow. and it's in our neighborhood. We live really close. We've always lived right in the close. Um, and my parents live really close with between my sister, my brother, my parents and the store. It is literally just blocks in either yeah. direction. So, you know, we've always been here. It is still our, we, we consider that our job. Everything else is on the side, even though Jody's you know, this crazy yarn dyer now, that's another whole job in itself. Um, she still, it's the first priority is the store. So over the years, mostly we worked, once we had kids, we worked part-time so that we were able to be home with the kids. We would bring our kids to work in the morning at the office and try and get some office work done. And then when they went to school, we could look out the window of our office and see the kids out at recess. It was- Oh my God. <laughs> kind of crazy we don't live in a small town but it had that feel right. of just real closeness you know we were always available to go on field trips and do all that kind of fun stuff so we were always so grateful um and we love it like the the whole part of having this family business is it's a big part of who we are and 
um, our work ethic and being people per people, you know, being a people person and, you know, being in service like that, like helping, you know, customers all the time. We love it. We absolutely love it. So yeah, still our job. So what is your uh, favorite? uh, No, what is uh, the, your groceries, the store favorite item that you sell the most? Oh my gosh. That's such a good question. Things have gotten weird since the whole pandemic. Right. But, um, I am the worst person to ask that kind of stuff. I would assume it would be a staple like bread or milk or something like that. But, um, you know, over the years, our store has evolved and it used to be tiny. And then we sort of built out this amazing bakery and an amazing deli and an amazing. So even though we're kind of a small footprint, we offer, you know, import foods and things like that. And we have a lot of um, a Jewish community where we live. So we've got an aisle of beautiful kosher food all year. And then at Passover, it just explodes like all over. We get tons of stuff. So we we're a little bit different than most, I think, most supermarket type type things. Well, what is your favorite, thing, your personal favorite thing? So when you go in the store and you say like, oh, I need to. Yeah, so I'm not a bakery person. I would always be like the deli, like the olives uh, and the cheese and the meats and stuff like that. So, and I love really great produce. I like to cook. It's kind of like, I like it. I don't like to work really hard at it, but I like fresh foods and flavors and stuff like that. So if we didn't have, you know, fresh citrus and herbs and things like that, I don't know what I would do. But um, I do love grocery shopping when we go on holidays. Like when we were in Italy, my husband and I, a couple of years ago, we went in Rome, we went to a grocery store. We kind of went wherever we go because it's just, I think it's in our blood at this point. Yeah. We really like it. I like grocery. I mean, I like going to uh, markets, farmer markets, wherever I go, if they have it or the fresh, you know, little stores. And uh, in Italy, it's nice. You can go, you know, to, you still have that small, um, a reality like you know you can go to the cheese uh, shop you can go to the butcher you can go to the uh the guy that just sells fruits and uh, and juice and you, know, you guys stuff. shop every day and do you do it that way like do you go to the cheese shop and the bakery or do you find somewhere that's got kind of everything and you go once or twice a week uh when i am in italy which is you know i just came back and i'm like you know i still have my santa yeah. and uh, uh <laughs> I tend to go almost every day because that way I know, you know, I wake up, whatever I feel like having today, I feel this, I feel that. Um, there is a market once a week, so I know I get my veggies for the week. Mm-hmm. And uh, But then I go out for, you know, whether it's like the meat or the cheese or the fresh, uh, uh, I do go almost every day in the bakery. Also, yeah. the bakery has to be, I'm the bakery person. I so have to it allows me to go and get my coffee and, uh, you know, and little yeah. <laughs> treats every day. I have to say, having a bakery that bakes fresh bread every day, I am super spoiled. So I only want bread that's been baked that day. I don't want, it's rare for me to buy like commercial bread unless it's oh, kind yeah. of something else. It's always like fresh bread and buns and I get really spoiled that yeah. way. So even when we travel, it's like, where's the fresh Where's the brand new baked bread? Yeah. So it, that, that is one of my favorite smells, fresh baked yeah, bread. Yeah. Is yeah. that I'm here in the US, I don't eat bread at all. I just don't, you know, like yeah. for exactly for that reason, I think it's yeah. just here, it doesn't feel the same as much as they are, you know, they are bakers. And just New York, it just takes a long time to go and get, <laughs> you just don't walk around. It's like, let me just go out five minutes to buy some bread. <laughs> it takes exactly. a little bit longer. Exactly. It's too bad. And if all you have is commercial bread, it's, you know, when you do go find that fresh bread, you'll be like, whoa, yeah. this is kind of amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I love well, it. That's just, I was talking about your design. So when did you start about designing the actual design process? I, I think it was 2018. No, I don't know. I would have to look it up. Um, I've always loved modifying patterns and things like that. And a really well-written pattern, but I was really chicken to, to make a pattern, a pattern of my own. I just feel like it has to be super clear and I don't want people to be frustrated or upset. So it took me a long time and a lot of poking and encouraging from my sister and a very good friend and lots of support. They were like, you can do it and send me the pattern and I'll test it for you. And, um, and I, it's just, it's, I love it. People were so kind and, you know, they, 
supported the pattern and then they knitted and said, oh my gosh, I've knit five pairs of Galliano socks and they're my favorite. And, um, and then it just seems like ideas keep coming. So I do love it. It's not something I do full time, obviously, yeah. but um, it seems like in the summer, I all of a sudden start getting all these ideas for fall knitting. So even though it's, I do have some ideas coming, I don't think I'm going to have enough time to get them all done, but it, it does make me think of like, I love color work and cables and I really do love hand knit socks. So lots of times things are socks, but I yeah. do love, um, I'm, I'm really loving the cowls. I have to say, I love shawls, but cowls are very quick to put on and easy to wear and they never fall off. And so, yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah, I'm definitely a cowl person as well. I know you design a lot of socks and, uh, you know, when you go on your Ravelry and, uh, um, is, you know, you have quite a lot of lovely socks uh, as well, which I never need a pair of socks. So, yeah. uh, but I know a lot of people do. And, uh, you know, if I get somebody gives me a pair of socks that is hand knit, I'll definitely wow. wear it. <laughs> They're such a good gift. People yes. love them. Yeah. Maybe I will have to, after the cowl, maybe I should start thinking about it. But let's talk about uh, the wild rose cow. How did the idea came about? Do you have your sample there? I do have the, my original one. Yeah, I yeah. do. Can we do so, that so people know sure. what they're talking about? Yeah, so it is a color work cowl. Um, the original is done in a fingering weight yarn, which is a non-superwash Corydale base from Moondrake yarn. Um, so Rochelle is just so lovely. And we had decided to collaborate on something. So I, I really like this crisp kind of color work. I love the flowers. Um, I just sort of played with motifs and it just, it, I love it. I found that it was not a, not too crazy as far as color work goes. Like this whole section is really intuitive. And um, I just, I just really enjoy color work. And didn't want something super bulky. So I love that the yarn was fingering weight and yet keeps you warm, but it's not super like sweaty and bulky yeah. and that kind of yeah. thing. So that's, thank you. I, I really enjoy it. And I cast on a new one for your knit along, which I'm really, really excited about. I actually, when I do design something, I always think, oh, I, I could do six more versions, right? But it's like, come on, you need to move on. Get like, move on. <laughs> But um, I'm thrilled to be knitting a new one. Oh, I'm so happy. And uh, yeah. we will talk about the the the, um, the color that you chose. But uh, <coughs> so when I, so the pattern is available on Ravelry. It's the Wild Rose Cow. You can find it there. Yeah. And uh, um, so we decided to put together, you know, first I started and I said, I'm going to knit or start of it. And, uh, and then we decided to go with, uh, uh, with the knit along. So when I saw the pattern, when I saw the, uh, the design, I'm a flower person, you know, you can see that everything has to be colorful and flowers. And I love that, uh, um, you know, I did love the flower, the central flower um, so much that I thought I wanted to have an extra repeat. So, you know, an extra three repeats of the flower instead of two with the borders. I'm and sure. uh, uh, so, you know, we just modify, basically, we're just doing an extra repeat, the same size, same everything, same chart, same, we just do an extra repeat. So we do one, you know, a little bit less than this of the, of the border. And as you can see in my, you can see here, uh, I simply, you know, as you, as you talk about modifying patterns, you know, I like to do something as well, but it's exactly the same, you know, I, the pattern, so just be one of these repeat. And then I finish one, I'm going to do two more of these and then I finish off with the same repeat and yeah. I think it just you know it would just look a little bit it's going to be more flowery I love that Paula and I I do love I mean I, as a knitter myself of course I modify things to my taste all the time all the time so it's pretty exciting to see what people do with your pattern yeah. once it goes out into the world because there's going to be things that you never thought of or things that suit people better because this is kind of a longer, like it bunches around your neck and some people just want a more shallow, yeah. they, like they prefer yeah. something not quite as, so you're absolutely able to do that. You can make the chart whatever way yeah. you want. Oh, now that you said, I might just stop at two. <laughs> instead of yeah. two. <laughs> Let's see. Right. Like, <laughs> honestly, I think it yeah. would be great that yeah. way. 
too. Absolutely. Yeah, I will do, you know, once I get to the second one, I'll see. And the only other modification so that people, they are deciding to uh, join the knit along and they see the photos and they say, well, it looks a little bit different. Well, right. uh, uh, on, uh, um, on Amy's advice, actually, because as I said, I'm such a, uh, my, uh, a newbie color work. I think this is really mm. my second one. So um, I added the anchor, uh, an extra anchor here. So you can see better in, uh, uh, you can see better in this, uh, in this photo. So, you know, because this was a long float, yeah. So we just added a little anchor in uh, in the second in the in the color work, so that I didn't have to uh, to 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 After float yarn. the yarn. Yeah. A little longer, but that's me because it was easier for me to uh, mm -hmm. to make the you know also because I wear rings and I thought you know maybe it just I don't want to get stuck. Yeah, there's a few <laughs> rows with um where you'll want to catch your float because it gets too yes. long, or yeah. like you did, just add a stitch and then it's yeah. I thought, it's you know, instead of catching it, I'm just like, oops, like I need a color. And um, I mean, most of it is not, you don't have to worry oh, about catching, but there yeah. are a couple of rows, a couple yeah, of rounds. Exactly. So that's what I did. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite okay with my, the back as well. So it's not that bad. It's, uh, it's, you I know, know you like love it. pink. I know you love pink and that's, <laughs> I do too. I love it. But I sure, one of my favorite things is pink and orange now. That is such a beautiful combination, Paula. So the the the, the yarn that we use is our uh, Tibetan cloud, and uh, which is uh, uh, Tibetan wool. is very soft because is uh, we we treat it like uh, uh, like the cashmere. We dehair it, so we separate the coarse wool from the the coarse fiber from the soft fiber. So this is a softer. Uh, wool that you would normally, you know, uh, you will find uh, on the market. It's not a merino, of course, but it's a kind of. Uh, I was going to ask you what the secret is because yeah. this is my first time knitting with the Tibetan cloud. It is so incredibly soft and so beautiful. I'm so happy that I just bought a sweater's worth of this yarn to knit a sweater in. I don't know what this, and it's just, it, it it's sort of soft almost velvety like yeah so beautiful to work with is that you know there's a so here the story this is like andrea is killing me each time i tell the story um so you can think like us being on the grassland for years we work in tibet we decided to go with uh, the baby yak uh, you know the fiber the nomads we tried the but then we have a little bit cashmere and i'm uh you know sitting on the grassland with these herds of sheep passing by and then you have few yaks here and there and I'm like you know look at those sheep like everybody's doing wool you know yarn and and sells wool can't we do that yet and uh, Andrea was say well you know remember the you know sheep wool is tend to be a little bit coarse mm. oh I said no no I don't want anything you know I don't want anything that is not soft like a baby yak or something similar. I said, no, you can have that. I said, well, you know, can you just figure out a way of me having some wool that I can put on my skin and, right. uh, you know, like doing this. And he said, no, it's not, you know, can't, we can't do it. But I said, look at all those sheep out there. Look at that. What a waste. Right. And, uh, you know, it's like Tibetan. It's like a local sheep. Nobody, like the breed of the sheep is nobody else in the world. And, uh, and he said, it cannot be done. But I'm stubborn. You know, and I kept saying every year now, you know, I could not go back anymore that he was going back and he said, just ask. So we start thinking, say, what if we take the wool and instead of, you know, shearing it and then processing it, we actually put it through the dehairing machine like we do the cashmere and the baby yak. So we separate the coarse hair from the fine hair and we just take the fine hair. So it's really, it's called, you know, the heart of the wool. So we tried that. And when it came and I said, ha, ah, you see, that's it. It's so much softer. It's and, so beautiful. Uh, uh, and so that's the secret. It just, of course, there is a lot of, uh, um, you know, leftover because you, you know, that's, uh, but we sure. don't waste it because we give it back like the baby yak uh, fiber. We give it back to the nomads and they, um, you know, they do stuffing for the mattresses for monasteries. Sure. Uh, they use it for felting. They use it for other ways. So nothing goes to waste also for, you know, thermal things. So <laughs> it's, uh, 
the best of secrets. That's behind. a great story. And I think a lot of people think, oh, natural wool, it's you know, going to be like rustic and toothy. Uh, it doesn't. To me, this is like the smoothest, softest. I, I was knitting the other day and I, I took this and said to my friends, touch this, like, just touch it. It's just, <laughs> can you believe it? It's so nice. So, so I'm, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. So I would just I would say that the color I, I have is the pink and the, yeah, that's why I was saying the pink and the, my colors are the pink, the cherry blossom and uh, Dahlia, which is the orange. So and it pretty. only takes one skein each and you still have the leftovers. Yeah. You'll have a little bit left over. Yeah. Um, well, when you came out with your tulipano color last year, I'm a big red fan, but a beautiful red to me is very hard to find. Like they're all a little bit different, but this one to me was the most perfect red ever. Kind of a tomato-y red. Yeah. It's, it's it's not it, yeah. super bright. Anyway, I just love it. So I have this at home and I knew that my new cowl was going to be cast on with that. And then I decided to use a color changing yarn just to make it a totally different cowl than, um, because I didn't have tons of Tibetan cloud yet. Thank God I'm going to come see you at Woolen Folk. But I put in a color changing sport weight yarn. Oh, that's really nice. And I just thought that was kind of fun. So this is the spin cycle dyed in the wool that they did with um, Adela of Lola Bean. They called it color so nice. So it's all these pinks and greens. Yeah. That's and I'll have to get a skin of that too then. Very nice. So, and I'm definitely only going to need one skein of that. So I love a project that'll kind of use up most of what you're using. Yeah. But Paula, I just love it. I think this yarn, this wool, like I said, I've been gushing to my knitter friends about, you have to touch this. You have to use it. So I'm a big fan of, of wool. Oh, and yeah. this is just oh, that's beautiful. great. And I love, I love your version. You know, I definitely need to, to get a skein of that and, and show it. I think it wouldn't fall. I'll try to get a skein. I will ask a spin cycle or Adela, which I yeah. am. And uh, to see if they still have a skein somewhere. You know, I know I'm sure that. it'll still be around. I'm yeah, sure that will be Yeah. And then we can be at wool and folk. But it's funny that you mentioned the red because uh, you know I always have these stories. Again, we are not uh, as as I said, we just come you know we come out with things and idea as we go. We don't have these long term plans or any. Yeah. And uh, uh, so I don't I don't wear red. I don't like red, and red is not my color. Or <laughs> should I say. It is. I it would be. I feel like that would look beautiful on you. It does. Apparently it does. But I just like no red. And it's my daughter's favorite color, which it was like such a disappointment when she stopped loving pink. And she said, no, mommy, I don't like pink anymore. Please, no pink clothes, no pink, nothing. Like all that pink in the house, that's too much. Just let's go with red. I'm like, oh, no, no, please don't. don't do that. And anyway, so I was doing a live chat showing something. And I had this uh, uh, Italian uh, um, person that follows us, that follows every chat and always intervenes. And she kept saying, you know, what about red? What about red? What about red? So I put my, you know, I put the, uh, the, 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 the skein or whatever pink I was showing. And I said, all right, I'll make you a deal. I will come out with a red for some Valentine. That was January, like, you know, I think it was December. I come out with a red for some Valentine's in February. But whatever amount I do, unless you buy like, a, you know, a truckload of that color <laughs> for all of your friends, <laughs> uh, you know, and she said, you, you do it, I'll buy it. Right. And uh, so we did it. And <laughs> so we did it and we launched Tulipano for San Valentine. Uh, uh, it was a couple of years ago, I think. And it got sold out in 24 hours. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I love and it. I, I was like, oops, <laughs> maybe we had to do more. Isn't that exciting that it was so well received and it you were. So, and I was like, and. Uh, and you know, we will talk about it. Then I decided to, you know, I said the only way I can knit with red if I mix it with a pink. <laughs> and now that. this one, the peony and the tulipano has become a new obsession. So it's like red or orange, red and orange, orange and pink, red and purple. So, I think a sweater is necessary in those colors. That's so beautiful. So nice. Yeah. So, and we'll talk, I can talk about this. Um, 
I love that, Paula. I love the stories where they're like, we never planned it and it turned yeah. out great and everybody loves it. Um, I think red is, is beautiful. And I think it really goes with, I mean, if there's lots of neutral lovers yeah. and it add just a tiny little pop, right. And it'll go with literally yeah. every neutral you own. Yeah. So I, I do love it. Um, my first Mayak experience, <sighs> can I share? Yeah was and I'm thinking I wonder if I think I might have tested it this but I think I, you did I think, I think you did. I did too so <laughs> what a treat um Hohe designed the hipster shawl when I was just obsessed with the tassels and that cool cross stitch yeah. um and there was a yarn shop in Canada a spa coat carried Mayak yeah and I had never used it so I and Hohe said oh it's just so beautiful so I ordered that for the test knit in the ochre color, which I had never knit with that color before. This is one of my all time. This is for sure my most worn shawl and it yeah. feels amazing. Like you think a hundred percent baby yak. I always think, Oh, it's going to be like cashmere. It's going to be so incredibly soft and pilly and, and that's okay. I can live with that because I love how it feels, but this is not like that. It doesn't feel. It's so amazing. Yeah, yeah, I know. I shouldn't say I know. Worn, my to, most yeah. worn shawl, my most by far. And when I travel, this is the one I throw in my bag. Yeah. Um, and I would knit it again in two seconds. So this is the hipster shawl by Hohe and it's knit with a baby yank medium and it yeah. takes five skeins. And yeah. Hohe herself, uh, you know, you see a lot of picture of Hohe in the winter. That's what she travels with. That's, uh, and then she made the, the cowl, which also takes five skein. I have the cowl here. And uh, yeah, so, you know, if you like, prefer mm -hmm. a cowl, that's uh, the you know the cowl version that we have we are going to get it uh, we are going to keep it at uh, woolen folk so you should I was just gonna say maybe that's what i should get at woolen folk because i knit the cowl but i gave it to my mom so now i don't yeah. have one that yeah. is such a great pattern and um, i should not say easy. sorry i should not say and i won't show it here but there is a new red uh, that we are launching at woolen folk in the baby yak well I'm going to put a note to myself. Go to <laughs> <Paula> first. <laughs> but I remember I met you. I Two stories about the hipster. First, uh, um, Hohe, she was uh, traveling in the US. And I got a call saying, hi, I'm uh, uh, on a ferry boat. I have an idea for the shawl. I need five skeins. I want your color mustard. And uh, which is, sorry if I turn my back, of course. When you need the mustard, you don't have it. Probably I finished it. And uh, um, what is that? And uh, uh, but I, I'm just going to be here in the US for another two days. Can you get the yarn to me? And I said, Where are you? I said, I'm on a ferry uh, on my way to Seattle. <laughs> um, I'm like, I'm in New York. How do I get the yarn to you in two days? But then I thought at the time, uh, we uh, church mouse in uh, Bainbridge Island. Yeah, was carrying the yarn, and I said, "Well, there is a store." She said, "Oh, that's what I'm going to." And I said, "So I called the store and I said, would you mind giving Hoki the five skeins that she needs, and I will replenish it?'" And it was super nice. And uh, so she got her yarn, and uh, you know, so the hipster uh, shawl was born. But when it came out, uh, you know, a few months after, uh, it was my first time in California at the Stitches West. Yeah. I think I lived down too. I'm too. I, and with the corner of my eye, I saw you coming towards the booth wearing that shawl and I froze. I'm like, oh my God, she's wearing the shawl. Of course. <laughs> and I think we have a picture together with that. Uh, yeah. Listen, that was no accident. Jody and I were at Stitches West. We were working for Craftsy, which was a ball. Yeah. And then we had a little, a very tiny bit of personal time. And we looked at the map and we came to find you. I wanted to say hello and tell you how much I love the yarn and to see it in person, right? Because there's, for a long time, our community, we only had one local yarn shop. So it was really fun to go to shows and see stuff in person that they can't carry everything. Um, so it was no accident that we saw you that day. We came ah, to find you. I didn't so, know that. You see, yeah, I think yeah. it was one of my first show and I was so nervous and I was like, you know, and I we didn't have so many colors. We didn't have the wool and uh, 
and uh, but you know the hips are definitely was uh, uh, but uh, didn't I see you at EYF right after that too? Yes, yes, yes. yes I feel yes. like, and I just kept saying to Jody, she goes everywhere. Like they're going everywhere with this yarn. So that was exciting to me that it got to everybody got to see it, right? Yeah. I think is that the moment we start doing, uh, you know, the shows and events as much as I love that. I love uh, as tiring as it is, is yeah. uh, I, I really love uh, um, because I, it is, it's, it's feel weird, you know, to be in front of a camera is, uh, uh, is different than meet people in person. And uh, I love that uh, uh, humor as much as, as shy as I am, you know, I, I had, it took us a long time to talk with designers because I could not approach them. I could not email them. I was just like, I cannot do it. And, you know, now we are lucky that we have, a, you know, a few that come to ask and ask for the yarn support, whether they are younger or anything else. I mean, newbie or anything else. Uh, but at the time it was like, you know, who, you know. So uh, I remember when Andrea Maori came to one of our events and, uh, and she said, you know, can I get some yarn from you? I would like to do a design. I almost flipped over. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, that's so exciting. Yeah, I was like, take it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like things like Nora Gone, she was uh, at the Vogue knitting. And uh, I recall, uh, uh, sorry, I just look in Joyce has this beautiful, uh, the God distracted with my, <laughs> my oh, eyes. Joyce, that is and amazing. The, Joyce has the, 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 the moon wake cowl. Can we just, Joyce, do you mind if I, I you're in my video now? Please show it. Do you want to, Anna? How yeah. long have you been working on that, Joyce? On this? Yeah. Oh, it's done. It's done. Oh, it's done. Oh it's my gosh, done. that's amazing. beautiful. This is, uh, this, oh, I'm sorry. I've got something on my. We can hear you. It's good. Okay. I've got something over the top of my screen, so I can't really see anything. So anyway, uh, the Moonwake Cowl by Andrea Mowry. And you were talking about her with wanting your yarn. And this is the first time I have used your yarn, Koala. Aww. And it is amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah, and it, and it, only, takes, it only takes four skeins. Uh, and you can just, you know, any right. color combination. Right. Well, it's going to oh. wear. Like this hipster shawl, like I said, I tested. it. I've never had to glean it. It looks like the day I took it off the needles. I don't know what the secret is with this one either, but it just seems to, and it's toasty. You know, even a light thin, like light piece is so beautifully warm, which is great for and me because we live in a very cold place in the winter, yeah. but not too right. and, there, and there's no pilling. I mean, yeah. it's like, I've had this, I wore it all last winter. So it's it's gorgeous. that's one of the things that, and again, because it goes through the same process, we are really, you know, trying to take all of that uh, um, uh, short fiber uh, off the same with our cashmere, you know, a lot of people say that our cashmere feels a little bit cottony because it does. When you look at the skein of a cashmere, it doesn't have all of that fluff, right? All of the halo. And I said, because the halo is the poor quality cashmere that we eliminate. And, uh, you know, you buy cashmere, you spend so much money and then you start peeling. Right. So, you know, we thought if I have to invest as a NATO, as, as a person, I don't want that. So that's why our cashmere also peels really, really very little. And the baby- Grace, you're, you're tempting me now. I'm going to need to make that. Don't you love knitting a project on a small, like yes. a circumference needle and you just, there's no increases, decreases. You just go round and round and round. Till you're done. I love those projects. I think that's exactly. part of the love knitting cowls too. Yeah. That's stunning. Thank you, Joyce. And of course, it that. is a it is a double. It is, you yeah. know, like you said, it's very around. yeah. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. you twist it and it's amazing. Yeah. Those are those are your colors. Thank you for letting me show it. Oh no, no. <laughs> yeah. thank you for sharing it with us. <laughs> and uh, um I want to go back to the to the to the wild rose cowl because sure. when uh, we decided to launch the kits, you know, to do something special because Tracy is special, we oh. decided to I'm trying to move things around here. Uh, we decided to offer the kit in one of our uh, uh, spread joy boxes. This is the special boxes that we made in the summer, and the design by um, Tibetan friend of mine is a Tibetan artist, Rapkar Wanchuk. 
and uh, who does this amazing, uh, uh, you know, Tibetan uh, uh, graphics. So we took some of his uh, work and uh, Elena, who works uh, with us, uh, put it together, the design. And the box is, you know, is nice and sturdy. I'll show you one of the, we have them as sort of as uh, people say they are like collectible. They are. You can just keep them and, uh, you know, so the um, the kit comes uh, uh, with just the two skeins that you want. So that's how the kit comes in. Oops, sorry. <laughs> so it comes with the two skeins. Uh, uh, you can just buy two skeins and that's it. But if you want the box, you can just, we have a kit on uh, uh, on the website. And uh, the, the boxes come randomly, either the, with the turquoise color or the purple color. You cannot oh, really? request what color it is. And it could be that if we run out of that box, you will get this box uh, instead, which is the peony, uh, peony box, which is the white one with the recycled paper. This is also one of my favorite. Uh, it, is a, well. it is a treat. I do love great packaging and a treat like that. You know, when you get something like it's beautiful, the quality of that box, it's, it's, it's a collectible for sure. Like yeah. it's sturdy. There's lots of the people that love like journaling and scrapbooking and doing all that. I mean, you could hold all your little bits of whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's beautiful. Mine is just on the table over there. I'm always going to keep it. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And uh, um, and we had different. Uh, of course, uh, if I would to be a little bit more organized, so the the, the cowl comes in all different color combination. You saw the uh, the um, wild daisy, the cherry blossom, and uh, with the dahlia. You saw the the one with the red and the tulip piano right. and the peony. But uh, you know, we I think we have something for any uh, any lovers of I think we had uh, I do have a list I wrote them down canela and calendula so this if you like more like a fall uh, this is like a rust color with a golden yellow so there's canela and uh, mm -hmm. uh, calendula there's also a very nice uh, and of course you can just use some of stash yarn like uh, you did but I like the Ooh, I like the blue as well. This is one of the new, this was one of the newest color. Ooh, that's so pretty. It's uh, morning glory with, uh, uh, with the natural. So this is the natural color. And we only over dye. Well, of course, this is easy to over dye. So that's also would be quite nice. Uh, uh, I love that. It really would look like a, like it would just a pop on that. Yeah, exactly. You did the blue in the background, right? But if you know, if you're like, if you're a lover of black as well, you could just uh, uh, do black and with any color, really. I mean, you know, black and white, if you like. That would be gorgeous. I should get a skein of that because my mom, every time I knit or something, she's like, does it come in black? Ah, yes, there you go. <laughs> yes, mom, I can, get, I can make it in black. <laughs> but there's so many other versions. I like the gray, you know, I like our gray. I think Sally Chigrijo also with the cherry blossom, maybe if I find the cherry. Oh, here, where's the one I'm using? Oh, I put it in the box, of course. That's what it is. Trying to. You're so right. I don't think you can go wrong. Like yeah, I think, I think it's just, these. and I think one of the things with our colors that because we cannot have tons of colors, we always want to make colors. The palette that I create mm -hmm. every year has to go together. You know, it has right. to be something that, yeah, if I just grab two without looking, let's see what happens. I feel like that's exactly right. See, that's beautiful. Yeah. It's so, you know, that's that's what we think. Also, because, you know, we know that as a knitter, you invest your money in your stash and very often you end up using only a partial skin. Mm -hmm. So, and we always try to have the colors go together and find projects and, uh, you know, to for people to say, this is what you can do with your scraps. scraps. Yeah. Uh, so we always try to do that. And talking about scraps, oh, I, I think you could do with the leftovers. I think maybe not. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I'm looking at your. Yeah. Is <laughs> I want to knit this. These are the uh, snow day tartan. Snow day tartan mitts, yeah. And they are made uh, with a snow weight. Yes. So, Oh, Paula, you're so sweet. Like, I feel like I'm blushing. I have to say, I am a giant fan of sport weight yarn. And I know a lot of people do not like fingering weight yarn. To me, sport weight yarn is 
definitely heavier, like definitely fluffier, puffier. You can almost get like a DK gauge with some patterns yeah. when you're swatching. It is, it is like my happy medium these days. I really love sport weight yarn and, and it doesn't make a bulky item and yet you're still getting the warmth. Those mittens are um, a mosaic pattern. So it's not even really, it's not stranded color work. It's even easier than that. Um, and they're, you know, they're a pair that I wear all winter long. Oh, I just love them. A- so yeah, I really, really like them. It's, uh, uh, Amy, I think I want to make those. Just put it on the list. <laughs> and you're right. I don't think they need much yarn. I would have to look up the details. But yeah, the- I looked it up and uh, because, uh, yeah, I just looked it up and, it, and I thought I was just looking at the leftover of the skin, but I definitely, you know, I want to make it. Okay, that's so with pretty. The, with these uh, two uh, colors as well. Um, I don't think I've told anybody this yet, but um, there is going to be a wild rose hat and wild rose mitten pattern coming this winter. And I, so I haven't started it yet, but I love the motif so much um, that I needed at least a hat or mitts. And I thought, you know what, I think we're just going to do both. So hopefully it doesn't take too long for those, those to come out. Oh, excellent. This is great news. This is so, yeah, oh, yeah I'm looking forward to whatever you do. I'll do it. Yeah. I love, I love mittens too, yeah. especially. And uh, but the cowl is not the first pattern of uh, uh, design, I would say, or pattern by Tracy that we did need. And uh, sorry for the photo. I know it's, you know, but uh, the, let me see if I can show it. So cute. This is that the farmstead cute. hat also with a baby yak medium. Oh my God, it's so nice. I love the design so much. You can see here better. Thank and you. So Paul. this one is very easy as well. This yeah. is the, yeah. And I love the pompon with all of the leftovers that we had as well. That's such a good idea. Yes. And you can make two hats. I mean, if you get the, the with the, because it's different colors, I think it's three colors. Yeah. But you, if you reverse the main color, you can make two hats. That's a great idea. So, I love when you can use up all the yarn yeah. and you're not wondering yeah. what to do. And actually hats, were, I feel like we're coming into hat season where we knit them for ourselves and they're such a quick knit that we knit them for people for yes. gifts are on our list. So your baby yak medium would be amazing. Yeah, for sure. A beautiful gift to give someone a yak hat. Yes. And it's very <laughs> nice and warm and you don't sweat under him. I, you know, that's what my husband always says. Like, why do, why the only one that I don't sweat in is your yarn? I'm like, yeah. Because um, just- what sweater pattern yarn is Tracy wearing? Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm wearing a sweater today for the first time since I don't know when. Jody knit me this sweater for my birthday. It is a fingering weight and Surrey alpaca held together. It's the Lento sweater, um, oh, which is by a, Yona, Yona. By Yona Hitala. So if you look it up, it's on Ravelry. It was originally in Lina magazine, but it's a very simple raglan kind of boxy soft sweater I think originally they do like a folded collar um, but this Jody just did like a little bit of a inch and a bit and she added a little contrast pop so this is all sonder yarn so this is her lemoncello and I think it's Le Fee it's a kind of a soft pink but I was so excited this morning to put on something fuzzy it's kind of chilly this morning I love it's it. Warm in New York, but uh, <laughs> no, in Edmonton, I'm loving it. My son said, "Oh, it's so cold in the morning," and I said, "Yes, I'm so happy." <laughs> That's good. It's lovely, and it's pink. So, what is your favorite color? Really, you said red, but uh, is that your favorite color? I, you know, I'm someone that I love color. I wear, I, and now I'm sort of on a mission to knit sweaters in like a rainbow of colors in my closet so that I have something of everything. For a long time, I was knitting gray everything, which I do love gray. But then when I started knitting colors, I thought that looks better on me than the gray. So I'm, I'm sort of on a mission to knit everything. One of your favorite, my favorite colors ever is your petrol color. I think that is stunning. And your emerald, like there's so many colors. I don't know that I have a favorite. I also love your undyed. Oh yeah, the natural. Like the rich yeah. chocolate. And, yeah, yeah, that's so beautiful. This is the petrol. This is in baby yak lace, but it comes also in the medium. And uh, 
We have, and we have like a new teal coming also at Woolen Folk. So, and then we're going to launch it for everything. So, I mean, and I'm also looking, I bought your, um, so I bought the Tibetan cloud in the wild daisy. And then I bought your baby yak lace in the bright poppy color, the orange. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think when you hold that double, you kind of get about a similar yeah, gauge. Right? Yeah. But yeah. I'm going to mix that. I think it's going to be stripes. The, or the poppy will be stripes on a cream sweater. So I like all colors at this point. Oh, thank yeah. you. That's nice. Yeah. And you also need, uh, uh, you know, and you talked about it, which is really nice. Uh, it was funny because, uh, um, was that maybe like during the summer? Yeah, we on the summer, early summer. Uh, yeah. We start getting uh, a couple of some orders uh, for the kit that we have uh, for the From Me With Love. And I'm like, oh, interesting. Look at that. It's like somebody likes it. You know, we had it for a while back and somebody has discovered it. And then a few more orders came in and I was like, alert, alert. Who <laughs> talked about it? Yes. Uh, and then somebody, you know, one of my knitters uh, uh, email us said, oh, you see, it's on the grocery girl. I said, what do you mean? This might be the only one that I missed. And uh, uh, and you talked about it. I'm like, and there you were talking about the From Me With Love uh, uh, project that we have. And I know that you have asked for the pattern because you got the kit, but I had, you know, I didn't click. I <laughs> wanted to get knitting right away. So I ordered the kit and then I messaged you and you were so sweet. You sent me the pattern ahead because I did have, I was going to substitute your baby yak lace for what was in the kit because yeah. I wanted to get knitting right away. Yeah. And I did knit it actually as a birthday gift. I share a birthday with a girlfriend um, and we switch, we give each other presents every year. So I knit that for her. So I still have to knit one for myself. That yeah. is such a joyful pattern. This is such a small, you know, this is only two little skeins of our uh, uh, baby yak uh, uh, silk, 50% baby yak, 50% uh, silk or the baby yak cotton. And it's such a fun little knit, you know, basically the, it comes in this, in this box, the project comes in the peony box with the pattern. And the idea, it also comes with a little card uh, because it's said like, from me with love, we wanted something that you can knit for yourself. But if you want it as a gift, you just, uh, you know, you take the yarn out, you knit this little uh, neckerchief. It could just be very easy, very French kind of thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, which is very popular. And now we have done it quite a bit a while back. And it's really nice and small, or you can wear it on your head. You can wear it in different ways. You can just wear it as a um yeah you could roll it up and just tie it like a little yeah, that's right yeah so cute so you could just uh, uh do that instead and it's so quick and the, you know the pattern basically you don't need them instruction you can and then the yarn makes it feel so luxurious like with the silk yeah. and the yak like it it's is really it is very it's a great knit because you know the pattern immediately yeah right it's a very and simple pattern so you it was one of those ones I said, if you're going on a trip or you're going, it is the perfect, like people say socks or a hat. Yeah. This is exactly the same thing. And I love knitting stripes. Me it too. was, I can't wait to knit another one for myself. It is fantastic. And uh, so what you do, if you want to give it as a gift, you just, maybe you get one for yourself and one I for never thought of that. You just, what you do, the idea is, and there is a card that you can, that comes with it. And you can say from me with love with something. You put it back in the box, you put some paper and uh, you shift it with the box and you're done with your Christmas gifting. That is so smart. And it's only two skeins of, that. of uh, yeah, Ooh, just look at some of the new colors. I yeah. got your kit that's the pink and the orange. Yes, <laughs> you got those ones. So let me see, of course I don't have an orange. How unprepared am I here? I, I should start knitting one. that. I should start knitting that. It was a real treat to knit, and I think she really liked it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And people, that's one kid that went, you know, we just did it, and uh, we made it in collaboration with this uh, yarn store in Switzerland, uh, Yarn Shop Lugano. She's a wonderful uh, uh, person, Gabby. And, uh, and when we did that, we said, okay, let's, you know, somebody said, oh, I would like something bigger. So we did the uh, From Me With Love Grande, which means big. Oh. So it's basically two skeins of the cloud. It's still the cloud, oh. two skeins, and you can knit as big as you want. So this is what I had here. I've done my one in the um, tulipano and peony. 
Oh, that's and, uh, so this is a, you know, as a good size, I still have the, to weave in the ends. Uh, but it's, you know, is this is a travel project, watching TV, no problem. Or you can make it with the full skein. If you use the full, full skein and you just stop when you finish, it's really big. Okay. So that's where you're using all the yarn, that yeah. one. This is all the yarn. So the full skein yeah. of flower yeah. is huge. It's really big. It's um, funny. I have a hard time picturing how far yarn is going to go. Two skeins. Like that's a big shawl. It's huge. It's like, you know, I, we could not believe it either. I so much that I stopped in my version because I don't that's big enough for me. Right. <laughs> and that means that I have yarn left over in this project for your, <gasps> for your mitts. Well, let me tell you, that's a great idea. That is a great idea. I think, you know, it's important to always think about as I said, you know, it, it, we don't have all of the money of the world. And uh, I know that our yarn, because of the way it is sourced, the way it stands for, what it stands for, uh, I mean, it has, it's not the, you know, it's not the cheapest in the world, but, you know, the, the, the quality speaks for itself. So you want to use every single bit of it. And, uh, you know, that's why we always think like, what else can we offer to people that, uh, um, you know, you can use all of it. I do. I love that. I love knowing that you guys it going all the way back to where you know the fiber came from that it, it's very important and, it, and it's making a difference to a community yeah right it's very yeah. important so I love knowing that and you're right the quality is incredible it's worth the investment and the pieces you knit with it are going to last forever it's the highest quality yeah. oh, I you. love it I love it and I'm stripe crazy so yeah, those those shawls Perfect. It's very fun to knit yeah. stripes. Um, so we have the cal, and we said that the knit along goes until uh, end of October, I think. If anybody wants to join, we have uh, the mm -hmm. Ravelry group. And even if you don't want to join the knit along, you can join a Ravelry group. Of course, uh, I'm sure you are uh, following uh, uh, Tracy and Jody on the Grocery Girls Ravelry group. It's huge, it's big, it's wonderful. <laughs> And, and you have a hashtag on Instagram too, right? So if we follow yes. the hashtag on Instagram, yes. we can see everybody's exactly. projects. I'm yeah. following that hashtag. So yeah. we are going to have, uh, you know, so we are going to have uh, uh, prices and we're always very generous with prices. Uh, we are going to have maybe another chat, you know, towards the end. If you are knitting the cowl and you're coming to, you happen to come to Wool and Folk in October, let yeah. us know and maybe we could, I don't know, what time is it? You're, sure. Because you're a podcaster. So do you know already the timing that you're going to be podcasting? Um, I actually don't know the exact time, but we are planning on spending a lot of time at Wool and Folk. So you'll be tired of us. We'll be there a lot. So maybe we can find a time where you can. Oh, for sure. I'll let you know. And, yeah. uh, you know, so we can have uh, a few of the, you know, the mitts, the shows, everything that is uh, in our yarn is, and, uh, and then you can come and say hi to Tracy. I'm sure you can see her around, but. Uh, and when I cast my cowl on, I thought, I don't know how far I'm going to get, but I really want to knit. Well, I'm going to be done for sure. So I'm going to have so mine. Fast. It goes fast. I don't know. If you like color work, I feel like these kind of one skein, you know, yeah. two different color projects go pretty quickly. So yeah, hopefully we'll have a few friends and we'll take a picture at Woolen Folk of some, you know, Wild Rose Cowl, our little, yes. little group. Yeah. yeah. But Started then, or finished. You don't have to finish. Exactly. You can just come with yeah. your clothes. You, the beauty of Woolen Folk is actually, you can just sit, the chairs there, you can sit and knit, you know, after you've done, or, you know, the tour or whatever, and then is the podcasters and everything else. So it's... Uh, <laughs> I'm quite excited about going. Uh, uh, last year, year, I had a booth. Did you? And uh, unfortunately, Amy and I were all ready to go, basically packed up, and I felt really sick. Oh. And uh, I had to pull out at the last minute. So it's, uh, you know, so much. It was so nice. They would say, oh, just give us the yarn. We are selling it. But I thought I just want to be there. So I just really excited. You know, I said to him, so this will be the first time that you're going to. Yes. Yeah. It'll be both of our first times. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking. Well, that's exciting. Time. I'm yeah. excited to just go on a trip. We haven't been out that way for a long time. So it's going to be nice to go out east. It's yeah. been forever. But, yeah. So we will see you there. 
And yeah. uh, uh, we will, uh, um, as we said, we are going to uh, upload this chat on uh, on our YouTube channel. And uh, um, so if you want to follow us there, the thing about our YouTube channel is that we are not regular. There's nothing regular about me. It depends how, as I said, I wake up in the morning and said, I do it, I don't do it. So the best way is to subscribe and to turn on the notifications so you know when I'm going live or when I have a guest or when we actually put on something. Uh, it also means a lot if you do subscribe because uh, it's just made us feel like to be more uh, loved. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's a great idea. You have so many good ones up there now that people can catch up yeah, uh, yeah. as well as be ready for right. anything new that comes yeah. up. So yeah. I love it. I love and, your uh, Yeah. So, you know, follow us, uh, uh, join the cow, join the need along if you want to just join the group. And if you just need something else, it's fun. And yeah. uh, share it, uh, uh, share it with us. And uh, what Tracy, thank you. It's always fun to thank talk you, to Paula. you. Thank you for choosing my pattern. I feel very honored and I'm just thrilled that you like it. And I'm so happy to be knitting along with you and, and anyone else. So thank you. I love working with your yarn and I'm so looking forward to seeing you in person again very soon. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you everybody for joining. Uh, and uh, I will see you very soon. Thank Have you. Have a great weekend. Have a great time. Thanks for coming guys. See you thank soon. You. Bye. Bye.